Oh yeah. Gotta get them all. Still gotta shoot from the hip. All angles of the hip. Blah. Boom. Dude, what are you doing? Taking some sweet bangers, dude. What's it look like? Blah. Boom. It's the chicken wing. Oh yeah, how's it going? Yeah, that's cool. Bam, so got it. Kobe. Girls like that top down angle. No, you're wrong. This is wrong. You know, paint the fence. Mr. Miyake. What is that? Yo, what is with the rapid fire? You're shooting products, man. They don't move. They're still. Peter McKinnon said to do it, so it's all good. That doesn't make sense. I'm not gonna miss a moment. Getting it all from all the angles. Are you messing with me? Shut it, drag. Shut it, drag. Your lens cap is on, man. I knew that. Thought it was a filter. Is this how you do it? You charge people for this? Do they know? You see the tie, dude? You see the hat? Mind business. I'm an artist at work. You're making me cringe right now. How do you even get in here, man? Are the door unlocked? You're an embarrassment to the community? To me? It's like I barely know you. Where did this come from? I'm sick to my stomach. I wish you'd get out or just let me show you how this is done. What is going on? Welcome and welcome back. In this video, we'll be going over how to shoot in manual mode to get the best photos and the most out of your camera body and lens. There's a time and a place where shooting in auto settings and JPEGs are needed like weddings who want a same day social media teaser during the event and you don't have time to edit because you're still shooting on site or you're a hobbyist who enjoys taking photos for fun and don't want to spend the extra time editing or learning how. But if you want to make money with photography, advertise for your small business, or if you just want to take better looking photos, shooting in manual is the way to go. Manual mode gives you complete control over your camera settings, and by manually adjusting these settings, you'll have more creative control over your photos, and you can be sure your camera captures the exact image you want. And shooting in RAW will give you much more flexibility in post in terms of pushing and pulling the colors to get the look you want without degrading the quality of your image. By the way, the examples I'm about to show you is not the way to properly light for a subject or a product shoot. It's just for demonstration purposes. But these are the three settings I wish I understood when I first got into photography, also known as the exposure triangle, aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. Aperture has more to do with the lens than the camera. When the aperture is wide open, the lens lets in more light in the camera's sensor, which makes the images brighter. So bigger aperture, more light. Smaller aperture, less light. The other thing to remember with aperture is the bigger the aperture, the smaller the number and shallower depth of field, aka blurry of the background. Perfect for portraits and headshots. Smaller the aperture, bigger the number, the more people or objects are in focus. Shutter speed determines the amount of time your sensor gets exposed to the light. So faster the shutter speed, the shorter amount of time your sensor gets exposed to the light, which is great for shooting sports or handheld to reduce blur and keep your photo sharp. But keep in mind, the faster the shutter speed, the more light you'll need, whether that's external or natural light, to avoid having to crank up the ISO, which we'll talk about in a second. Slower the shutter speed, longer amount of time the sensor gets exposed to the light, which means it will increase the brightness the slower the speed and most likely overexpose it. That's where a variable ND filter comes into play, unless you're doing night photography. And regardless on whether you're shooting in the day or night with a slow shutter speed, you'll definitely need a tripod to reduce blur and keep your photo sharp. ISO is the last resort to brightening your images. You can think of it like a stereo. The higher you crank up the volume, the quality of the sound gets distorted, sounds muffled, just not as clear. 
Same thing happens with too much ISO. The higher you crank it up, the more noise or grain you put into the image. The same rules apply to cell phone photography if you have a pro mode or whatever yours calls it. I haven't seen a phone that lets you choose your aperture, but as long as you can control the shutter speed and ISO, your photos will be much better. And if you decide to start shooting videos, the same exact rules apply plus one or so rules. You basically choose your frame rate depending on what you're shooting and double the shutter speed. With video, depending on your location in the world, the cinematic look is 24 or 25 frames per second. And to shoot slow motion, you typically want to shoot at 60 frames or above. So if my frame rate was 24 or 25, I'd set my shutter speed to 50. And if my frame rate is 60, I'd set my shutter speed to 125. Otherwise, the footage would be choppy, maybe some flicker from the lighting, but the same rules about aperture and ISO still apply. Now that you got the basics down, get out there and practice. You're only as good as your last shot, and there'll always be something to learn. Reading and watching tutorials will get you to a certain level, but you have to be applying what you're learning so it sticks and to gain experience while building your portfolio. And remember that shooting is some of the work, editing is the next necessary step, which we'll dive into in another video. If you want to check out the settings, light placement, setup, and stuff for this video, that can be seen here. If you have any questions, please leave them below. And if any of these tips has helped, please drop a like and subscribe. But for now, I'm out. Peace.